This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. All Hit Radio. To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. And for the next four hours, I'm your host and your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the X-Zone. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the X-Zone comes to you Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. Eastern until midnight right here on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, the Starcom Radio Network, Digital Broadcast Network, and Digital Satellite Network. Worldwide toll-free, 800-610-7035. Email xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And our main radio site where you can listen to the Exxon, 724-365, as well as the live broadcasts, www.exoneradiotv.com. My first guest tonight, Exxon Nation, is Sharon Lynn Wyeth. She is the author of a fascinating book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Now, we're talking about mnemology science here. Now, that's the study of the placement of letters in a name and how they interact with each other to divulge natural tendencies in someone's character. With our instant uh, society, as demonstrated by the sheer number of credit card holders and fast food outlets, people want immediate gratification. Until now, it took time to be acquainted with someone, right? Well, in our busy world, we must make decisions about people quickly, hire or not, trust or not. And we need something, and this is where mnemology science comes in. Knowing what to look for for the name, for what to look for in the names provides an immediate insight into others as well as our own personality traits. Today, more than ever, strong commercial messages bombard us and often interfere with our reliance on our own intuition about others. So, joining me now to talk more about the mnemology science, her book that is presently out know the name know the person and she has another book coming out on halloween know the name know the spirit joining me now is sharon lynn wyeth and sharon welcome back to the exxon you are one busy lady i you know isn't it wonderful it's wonderful to see how many lives we can help and how many hr departments Mm -hmm. and how many businesses and it's just absolutely wonderful that people are finding such inventive uses for how to interpret a name and how to use it and apply it. I love it. Yeah, so, so do I. And, and for the listeners who weren't with us last time, um, because we've added a few stations, a few networks since you were with us last time, give us or give them an idea of what mnemology science is and what Know the Name, Know the Person is all about. Know the Name, Know the Person literally teaches you how to interpret the placement of the letters in a name so that you can know someone's personality predispositions. You can know if they're going to be honest, if they're going to lie, Mm -hmm. if they're a psychopath, if they're incredibly spiritual, if, if they're learning their lessons through relationships or finances or health, whether they'll get misdiagnosed in the hospital or whether they can go to allopathic medicine and everything will be fine. It lets you know someone's learning style, their preferences, how to upsell them if you're a salesperson. 
it, so many times I'll be talking to somebody and they'll go, I want you as my new best friend. Right. And right. it's just because when you understand the name, everybody feels, oh, my gosh, this person gets me. And right. it just improves relationships. Now, Know the Name, Know the Person was your first book, right? Correct. Now you've got a second book because the first time you were with us here on the XO and we talked about Know the Name, Know the Person, it was a great hour. Just like I'm sure this hour is going to be great because, you know, amongst other things, we're going to be talking about the book that comes out on Halloween, Know the Name, Know the Spirit. That's a book for people who want to just be able to look up and say, why am I here on the earth? Mm -hmm. What's my purpose? What did I come to learn? What did I come to share? Why am I here? And it's just a lookup book. You can, one chapter says the first letter and the first name, and you just look your letter up. And then the next letter, the first vowel, you know, you can just look up every letter and it gives you the importance of that letter first. And then it gives you the alphabet that would be in that position. And then it gives you name combinations. Like if you had an SH in your name or a JN in your name, right. you know, or a double T, what does that mean? What did that add to what I came to do? And so, so many of us are saying, why am I here? Right. And especially at this particular time, you know, in the whole evolution of everything. And so this book literally will help you find out this is what you came to share. This is what you came to learn. Mm -hmm. And this is your goal. And every single letter, it says, here's your gifts and talents with this letter. This is what your soul wants you to do with it. And here's your goal. So what does, what does my name mean, according to your book, Know the Name, Know the Spirit? Well, your name says that you're constantly wanting to improve on the knowledge that you already have. True. It says that you're here to nurture other people and expect loyalty. But at the same time, you're here to learn how to share the limelight because you're good at juggling balls and doing a lot of things all at once and nurturing everybody around and being the boss. And it says, how do you help others also become boss-like or ready to take over so that you can move on and don't have to do it anymore or they will kick you up the ladder and you will have all these protégés. Wow. Your name literally says that you're going for perfection. Anything that's not perfect and not good enough, you don't want out there. And so how do you help people pay enough attention to details that they're going to do a great job? That kind of said it all. Right. You're here to nurture future bosses. Fascinating. And, and where did this knowledge come from, Sharon? I did 15 years of research and trial and error, and then I went and applied it for three years, and I traveled to over 70 different countries, seeing if what I had come to working in the United States would work in different countries that used our same lettering, but different languages. And it does with just a few tweaks. And then it has slowly grown out of literally thousands of name readings, and I started seeing more and more patterns. I'm a math major, and I have my master's, and so I look at things in patterns. What is, what's a pattern that keeps reoccurring? And so it took me that 15 years to figure out all the patterns and apply them, but that's where it's coming from. And then just doing thousands of name readings, starting to see new patterns. For an example, one that didn't come out in the book, Know the Name, Know the Person, that I found afterwards is if the middle name is stronger, the letters are more dynamic and grounded than the first name, the person is a procrastinator because procrastination makes us go under stress because now we have a time pressure and then we go to our middle name, what it represents when we're under stress and then we do our best work. So are, are you, are, would you consider yourself to be a scientist? Yes, because it's trial and error and duplication. Everybody needs to be able to duplicate it and do it, and that's a good science experiment. Did you ever think that when you started out on your path that you would be the person to crack the Rosetta the Rosetta the Rosetta <laughs> code? There, I got it at the Rosetta Stone of names. No, really, I didn't. Um, I have a lot of friends that are highly intuitive and, and what other people would call psychic. And many people told me I'd be writing a book. And at the time they said that, I looked at them and I said, you know why I'm a math major? Because I don't like English. I don't like to write. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm not writing a book. And here I have a bestseller. I think I've rewritten it so many times before it ever came out the first time. 
because of people's insights and questions and, mm-hmm. and, and comments on the book. And it just is astounding to me that I'm writing. And so the answer is no, I, I never thought I'd be doing that. When you meet and greet people who have uh, purchased your book and have used it in business or their personal life, and they tell you the stories that you're dead on, that your information is, you know, it's there, like it's, it's fact. How does that make you feel? It, you know, it's wonderful. It's a fabulous feeling because I believe we're all here to be of service to help each other, mm-hmm. that none of us really get ahead until we all get ahead. And so if I can put in my two cents and that helps you spend your two cents and it helps somebody else get their two cents in, I think it's fabulous because living life, we're given daily challenges and I don't think life is easy. And yet there's certain gifts and talents that we have, or when we have certain knowledge, it certainly helps make life easier. And I think this is one that helps improve people's lives. Would the um, would know the name, know the person, help people who are undecided about who to vote for? This is election day up here in Canada, and um, you know, down in the United States, we watch with great interest what's going on with Bernie Sanders, and then of course the Donald, and then Hillary, and all of a sudden, according to news sources, um, Joe Biden is going to throw his hat in for the presidential race later on tonight. So what could your book do to help people who are just looking at the circus on TV and want to know the true story about the candidate behind the name? Well, when you're reading the book, you can interpret any name and you can know how they really feel. You can know if they're telling the truth or if they're not. Uh, you can tell what their issues are. For an example, Hillary Clinton has fairness issues, but she has a combination of letters in her name that says that she can be the perpetrator of violence or the recipient of violence. And I think she gets both um, from watching her. Well, I, you know, what happened in Benghazi was a direct result of her inactions or her actions at the time. So that nailed it right there. What about, right. what, what about she Donald? gets both. And then I look at, at Biden, and I just think it's right there in the name. He's been biding his time mm-hmm. until he can bite and be in. Right. You know? <laughs> like, that and, makes sense. You know, and I think he was always waiting for his turn. Mm-hmm. And so now he feels it's ready, and so he's ready to step into the ring. Um, when I look at Donald Trump, in his name, it really says that he has a logical, deductive mind. But it also says he's got a temper that can just flash pan at you. Oh, we've seen that on TV. I, I don't own yeah. a TV, so I don't get to watch that. You don't own a TV? No, I haven't owned a TV, but maybe five years in my entire life. And so I haven't owned one for 27 years now. Oh, my gosh. How can you live without a TV? I, I do radio. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't feel like I'm yeah. missing out. My days are incredibly busy mm-hmm. and and I'm connecting with people and, and I've been on TV, which is really ironic. Um, but I look at it as that way. TV is so alluring and it saps so much of our time. Oh, it does. But unless you're highly disciplined, you get sucked in and then a lot more time goes on TV mm-hmm. than what you originally planned. Yeah, I know a couple of kids like that. Yeah, and radio, you can still be productive, and you can listen and learn. You've just scored 16 brownie points. Let's keep them going. <laughs> so what what does the, um, what about, let's see, Bernie Sanders? What does Know the Name, Know the Person that you're the author of, what does it tell us about Bernie? In In Bernie's name, it says that he's highly independent, and he has a generous spirit, and he's very competitive. He can be a little bit emotionally off balanced at times. And that is because he wasn't taught to have self-confidence and he doesn't know his own self-worth. So he's constantly trying to prove others through his actions that he has value because he doesn't know his own value. That's too bad. Uh, You know, um, I, I listen to you talking. I listen to you describing the people behind the names and it is always so dead on that 
I, I can just imagine members of major corporations running down to their local bookstore or buying your book online because this would definitely be an asset to anyone, not only in business, but teachers, for goodness sake. They could get, they could get the behind the story of a student, um, parents, their kids. You know, it, this, is, this is a great book. And you know what I love? Christmas is coming. And this would be an ideal Christmas gift. Oh, it would. Yeah. And the other thing that's really cool is we have a team that answers questions if they go on Facebook under Know the Name. Um, a team comes in and just literally answers people's questions when they write in. So, like, if you're reading the book and you yeah. don't understand something, you just write in and you get a personal email back that explains it to you. Wow, you've got, you've got your own personal uh, name support. Which is really nice because at the beginning we didn't have that, and it helps to clarify for people. Right. And then we have a class coming up in Ottawa. Ooh, that's not very far from here. Tell me about it. Yeah. That's on the weekend of December 4th, 5th, and 6th, mm -hmm. and it starts at 6.30 at night on Friday and goes till 9.30, right. and then on Saturday it's 9 to 9. It's a long day, but it's a fun day, and then on Sunday it's 9 to noon. And you come out literally being able to do it. You know, I wasn't in the classroom teaching for 33 years not to use all those skills on how to teach fast and cleverly so that everybody's brain gets it. And so far, Rob, I'm able to say everyone's been able to do it by the time they've left class. Fascinating. Exonation, my guest this hour is Sharon Lynn Wyeth. She's the author of Know the Name, Know the Person, her website www.knowthename.com. Have you found uh, people within the human resource departments and uh, the hiring profession are using your book? Uh, yes, I do. And I have some companies that literally don't hire until they've cleared everyone's name. I have a company that's in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, they own four large businesses. And unbeknown to me, he had his name read. I mean, I didn't know who he was. Right. And he was so impressed. He said, okay, I want to hire you for six months. And unbeknown to me, he wanted to test me for six months. So every Monday for six months, he would send me these names of the new people he was hiring because his business keeps expanding. It's a wonderful company. And until four and a half months in, he said, you've always come back with number one and number two. And we look at the resumes and we interview. And then my team recommends to me a number one and a number two. And he says, this is the first time in four and a half months that you haven't matched it exactly and you take 10 minutes. Wow. And he said, your number two is our number one and your number one is our number two. So how did you get them in a different order? Why? And so I told him why. And he says, we wouldn't get that out of a resume and we wouldn't get that out of an interview. And he said, we're going to go with you versus our own staff because you've hit us dead on for four and a half months. And so that's kind of exciting. And now I get to go over there and teach it for them. I just, I love that stuff. And I want more people to know it so they can share it. That's how you get the right person in the right job. I would imagine that if we have listeners out there who are looking for Mr. or Mrs. Wright, that this book would be a godsend gift. Well, you know, when you say that, Rob, I have to laugh because... The vast majority of the phone calls I get mm -hmm. are either, is this my Mr. Right, or could this be my Mr. or Miss Right, or should I take his last name when I get married? Wow. I must be psychic. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all those wonderful nurturing qualities you have. Oh, I think it's a wonderful guest I have as well. Um, what, is, what is the strangest story that you can share with us that that you have been part of through your book? Um, one of the, I have my favorite stories. Um, one of them is when I was doing a fundraiser for a school in Washington state mm -hmm. and all the students came up and donated money and then got a quickie name reading. And, you know, I always want to say something positive and I always want to give something of value. And so it was like, I want to say name reading on speed because I had so little time to do everyone and they come up in groups and I had everybody putting their name on an index card so I could see them and then I'd shuffle them and who I was going to do first. So this one group of six boys came up 
And I looked at this one name and I said, oh, I'm doing it last. I need this whole time to think on that name while I do everybody else's. And so by the time I get to his name, everybody always already knew that this was accurate because I'd nailed five, you know, other friends. And I looked at him and I said, you know, touch is really important to you. And everybody started laughing because they understood that. Well, this boy in his name said that he would rape people on dates. Wow. And, you know, that's important to be able to read before mm -hmm. you go out on a date. Big time. And, mm -hmm. and so I said, you know, touch is really important to you. And you came to learn to be able to think of how your actions affect somebody else before you take your actions. And maybe if you can contain yourself mm -hmm. because out of compassion, you can see how your actions would affect somebody else. You might stay out of jail. And then it was like, okay, next, <laughs> you know? Right. I'm just thinking. And, I'm just thinking about all the all the different schools, you know, where there have been mass tragedies, uh, and and you know, with the tool that your book provides and the support that you provide on Facebook and getting people back emails, this would be a no brainer. It would be helpful. Yeah. You know, um, there was one that was just on the internet just the other day that asked us a question and we answered, and then he wanted to argue with us. And I always say, we don't argue, we provide information, take it or leave it, yeah. right? And so we literally wrote back and we said, we answered your question mm -hmm. and we're not here to engage in an argument. And he wrote back and he says, well, you should have known better if you really understood names. And so we wrote back and we said, we see conflict in your name right. and mm -hmm. we see authority issues However, we always have hope that maybe you've outgrown them. <laughs> Very diplomatic, yet direct to the point. You know, um, we like to be succinct, but I think that mm -hmm. some of the training that everybody gets very quickly, what do you see? Because you want to be able to assess quickly when you're meeting somebody, because we meet them in the park and at parties and on the bus, yeah. if you're taking a bus. And I mean, you don't have a lot of time. And the fabulous thing is, the minute you're introduced, you can go quick, 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 quick. Yeah. yeah. And you'll know whether you're safe talking with that person or whether you're not. You're and you'll know who gossips and who changes things around and who's very honest and sincere. And you know it instantly. Your book should be sold in every bar going, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, hi, hi, Sam, the bartender. Get, quick, give me this book. I want to check out this name. What did you say your name again was? Cheryl. Okay. <laughs> you, know, no. you know, that's funny because I had, when the book first came out in, it came out in December of 2006. Yeah. And I had friends go in that got it for Christmas and went and took it into their bars and was saying, hey, everybody. And everybody was looking up the name. And at the time, some of my friends wrote back and said, I sold 30 books that night. Wow. So everybody was sitting there looking it all up and, and, and seeing who's who and what's what. And, and you know, and it's fun. It's a fun way of learning about others, and it causes conversations. Because you might say, look, this is what this book says about you. Would you agree or disagree? Mm -hmm. You know, and then the person starts opening up to you more about who they think they are. That's true. That's true. And once again, by communicating and by talking, the book is the, what can we say, the, the door opener to the conversation and getting better acquainted. And plus, you know, let's face it, if it's not going to work, if some people go to psychics, some people go to astrologers, why not, why not buy a book? And learn how to do it yourself. People often ask me and ask the people I've trained. Mm -hmm. I mean, the most common thing we hear is, are you psychic? And everybody says, this can be taught. Can you teach being psychic? We don't think so. But this can literally be taught. And I've got what I call students. I mean, they're, they're adults, but they're, they're fabulous. And they can do it just as well as I can. And that's always my goal. What is the average age of a person who, who buys your book? And what, you know, what, male or female? Or does it go right across the spectrum? Um. I haven't found that women buy it any more than men. Mm -hmm. uh, last weekend, I just gave a class, and there was an equal number of men and women. Um, I find the typical age is anywhere from 40 to 70 is usually who I'm seeing in my classes. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Occasionally, I'll find somebody younger, but it's really they heard about it through somebody that was in that age group. Hmm. 
Um, and and in Hawaii, all the stats are different because you look at people 65 and above. Right. And my book is incredibly popular with that age group in Hawaii. Why? I've given a lot of talks in Hawaii. And that's the age group, I think, of the people who sponsor me. And so that's the age group that hears me. And then they tell their friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I think that's why. And it's and it's carried in a bookstore over there. And I think that's the age around of the owner. And so I just think that was the age and they all network. I oh, gotcha. All right, dear, you and I have to take a commercial break with the news at the bottom of the hour. Please stand by. Exo Nation, Sharon Wyeth is our special guest www.knowthename.com and uh, she is the author of Know the Name, Know the Person and coming out Halloween, October 31st, 2015 Know the Name, Know the Spirit Fascinating lady, fascinating books and I, I will tell you from personal experience she is dead on It's science and you know what, you can't argue with science. Well, you can, but it's not going to get you anywhere, is it? 1-800-610-7035, worldwide toll-free. My email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exone Radio TV, and our radio site where you can listen to the Exxon, 724-365, www.exzoneradiotv.com. The Exxon, a place where people dare to believe... And dare to be heard Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. Eastern until midnight. Right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network, the Starcom Radio Network. And by the way, listen to my buddy Ed Till Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Wow, this guy does radio like no one else has ever done before. This is the way radio was supposed to be done. That's why I'm here on his network. The Starcom Radio Network, www.starcomradionetwork.com. I'll be back on the other side of this break from our broadcast center here in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Once again, Sharon Lynn Wyeth is my guest, www.knowthename.com. to be able to read other people's minds well the next best thing is here when you know how to read a person's name you know how the person thinks feels and behaves each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime Mnemology science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Mnemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today. Know the name, know the person. Or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Jesus came back now and insisted that we listen to him. How would the world be different if Christians really followed the Gospels? For 2,000 years, we've been practicing a religion. Now, like it's finally time to read other people's minds. Well, the read best thing is here. Jesus, when you know how to read a person's name? Meet the Jesus you never knew. Roberta uses afterlife evidence and biblical analysis to prove that Jesus is exactly right. Learning the lessons that he came to teach is the reason we are born at all. 
Roberta says he has come back now to insist that we actually listen to him so we can begin to use his teachings to unite and transform the world. Liberating Jesus wherever books are sold. Jesus has the answers and it's not too late. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. demonstrate a metaphysical connection to the spirit world as a little girl. Her family noticed the connection, but it was a great-grandmother who told the family that Linnea was indeed gifted. The great-grandmother, who was also gifted, felt that Linnea had indeed inherited these attributes. It has been noticed that oftentimes, such things are passed down through the generations. Linnea was also born with a call, a thin white membrane across a newborn's face. Legend has it that if the baby is born with this call, the child will have second sight, or what we call psychic abilities. Linnea Starr does past, present, and future, and has the gift of prophecy. It is written within scriptures that if you are able to give factual information, and prophecies indeed come true, the gift indeed comes from the divine realm. Linnea Starr does large interactive groups as well as private gatherings. For more information on Linnea Star or to contact Linnea for a one-on-one -on -one consultation, visit her website at www.linneastar.com. That's www.l-i-n-n-e-a-s-t-a-r.com. The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State certified occupational school training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Holistic Cancer Foundation is a new nonprofit foundation that focuses on a holistic approach to cancer that includes physical, mental, spiritual, and political aspects. Cancer education, research, and care are provided for all types of cancer patients. You can listen to interviews with cancer doctors and survivors and read research on holistic aspects of cancer at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. That's www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. 
Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash Xone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. My guest this hour is Sharon Lynn Wyeth. She is the author of Know the Name, Know the Person. She also has a new book coming out on Halloween Day, Know the Name, Know the Spirit. Her website is www.knowthename.com. I understand you also have an app available. Yes, name meanings. For 99 cents, you can get your generic first name done. Now, the first name is the essence of who we are. Mm -hmm. The middle name, if you have one, is how you change when you're going under stress. And the last name represents your environmental influence. What did your parents try to teach you, your teachers, your friends? And so it's kind of like saying that the first name are the ingredients that you have in your kitchen, and the last name are the possible recipes you can make from those ingredients. How would your book, Know the Name, Know the Person, work for people uh, for example, who are not do not have English names. For example, um, Chinese. As long Japanese. as they're using our letter system, mm-hmm. it still works. And there's a chapter in the book that's called the "What If" chapter because when I was traveling around, people that were survivors of of the Nazi concentration camps mm-hmm. said, "Well, what does it mean if I went by a number for certain years instead of my name?" And other people would say, like in France. What if I have the accent more of going to the right or versus to the left? Or or in Amsterdam, they were saying, what if we had umlauts on our names? And and all of that is covered in the what if chapter in the book. Um, and I wanted to make sure that every time I was giving a talk on it, if somebody asked me a question that I thought, oh, that doesn't fit into a regular section, but I think other people might want to know that, I put it in there. For an example, in Germany, when two vowels go walking, the second one does the talking. And in English, when two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. So if you're interpreting a German name and you have a vowel diphthong, you just reverse the letters when you're looking up the interpretation. And there's just very few things like that that you do. What happens if a, an infant is given up at birth by its you know, natural mother and is adopted by a nice couple who have a heart of gold and they name the little girl. Well, I believe from all the stories I've heard around the world that the incoming soul impresses upon the one naming them what they want to be called. So we actually name ourselves in some of the States. And I don't know about the other countries. The laws are now written that you cannot change the baby's first name, but you can change the middle and the last. So what that means is the child's essence is still there. How they handle stress will be different because they're going to be taught differently. And, of course, the last one is different because now their environment is different. And you still read it. And it's amazing when I do what I want to call adopted children, no matter how how old they are. Mm -hmm. We go through, and especially if they knew what their birth name was, I show them how often. To me, it's just amazing that the adopted name will have the same lessons in it, just from a different approach. Now, okay, I understand that, and I can appreciate that. Makes sense. But let's get back to the numbers, because that is is something I never even thought of with the the people who were in concentration camps who had numbers. How How do you, how did that work? I look at the combination of numbers because I'm a numbers person anyway. Mm -hmm. And I just assign an A to one, a B to two, a a C to three. And I go all the way through. And then I look at the combinations all the way to 26. And then I look and see which two letters that they have next to each other and what numbers that would be. So that that also work with a person's social security number. I haven't tried it, but that's a great idea. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Or their driver's license number. Well, we've done it with cars, with the license plate car. And it's like, how are you going to feel and how many accidents are you going to get in? And how safe is this car going to be for you from the license plate that comes on the car? Now, we've done that. Right. But I mean the actual driver's permit. I don't know because I haven't seen enough of them to see patterns. Oh, I see. I see. So I have a gift for your listeners. Oh? We are coming – well, two gifts, actually – 
we are coming into holiday season very shortly. Yes, we are. And so because of that, um, and because the mailing is so darn expensive coming from one country to another, we just think it's ridiculous, that if they purchase a book this coming week on our website and they put in the special order place X Zone Radio, we will send them two books even though they only bought one book. Two for one. Two for one so they can give one as a gift so then they have somebody to discuss it with. Fascinating. And the, and the other thing I wanted to do, if it's okay with you, is you can buy the perfect gift for somebody based on the first vowel in their name. And I would love to give that information as we're starting to buy gifts, you know, around Christmas and the holidays are coming up so that everybody knows what kind of gift to get everybody they love. Well, that, that's that's wonderful. We should put them up at the Exxon Christmas store. Oh, that would be fabulous. Yeah. Okay, so if someone has a first vowel of an A in their name, like I do, like Sharon, it doesn't matter what letter it is, whether it's first place, second place, or third place, if it's the first vowel that shows up in a name. Those are very practical people. They love books. They love learning. Um, Anything that can give them more knowledge, they are the best re-gifters out there. (laughs) So if if you give them something that's not practical or a book, they're very, are beautiful they're very often ready to re-gift it. So the safest thing is to give them a gift card to a bookstore. If their first vowel is an E, like in the name Steve, Yes. all right, those people are very physically oriented and they come from heart and they like to have physical experiences. So if it's a woman, you give them a day at the spa, you can give them a massage, you can give them skiing, you can give them anything that gets them very physical, all right? If the first vowel is an I, like in the name William or Bill, those people, everybody with an I, they make lists. I want this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. And they really believe that they're loved if somebody buys them a gift off their list. And you may have the best idea for them and think you're being so creative. And they really don't appreciate it as much as if you just bought them something off the list. And if you notice their list, the price range of the items on their list is very, very little to a lot. So you can pick your own price range and yet they're thrilled because it's one less thing on their list that they have to buy for themselves. So I think they're the easiest people to buy for. The O, just give them money. Yeah. It's the only yeah. letter that just loves money. I give love them money. money. I love yeah. money. <laughs> and they'll add all the money they get from everybody and then they'll go buy something they really wanted that costs a whole lot more. No. No. <laughs> no, no, no. I end up giving all my money to my wife. Oh, and then she goes and buys something. <laughs> yeah, and then it costs more. You're so right there. <laughs> it costs more. Um, the you, they like experiences. Right. So you take them to a play or you take them to a new restaurant. You give them an experience that they haven't had yet. And that's what they love. You know, or tickets to a play or something. They want to have new experiences. And then if the first vowel is a Y, they want a gift that's unique that nobody else has. So those are the people, the easiest thing is, is to make them something. If it's handmade, it's very unique. And the people with the first vowel of a Y appreciate that the most. You're, you're, you're a math teacher. You were a math teacher. You're what I consider to be these, the math scientists of all math scientists. So why is it wives, unlike husbands, you know, you send us to the store, we go to the store and back. Why do wives, and I guess this would apply to women, but I don't want it to sound sexist, so I'll stick with wives. <laughs> well, you know, my, my wife doesn't under, understand the concept about the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. You know, it was like, she'll go to Walmart, but on the way to Walmart, she'll go to Lowe's, she'll go to this place, she'll go to that place, she'll go to this place, and she'll go to that place. Then she'll eventually get to Walmart, and it's like that on the way home, crisscrossing. Why is that? I really would like to say that that's the difference between the left brain dominant people and the right brain dominant people. And in our culture, mm-hmm. more men are left brained and more women are right brain. Um because some women go directly just like the men, but they're more left brain dominant. 
And what it is, is that the left brain, when that one's dominant, it's very direct, it's very practical, it's very, let's get this done. Yeah. And the right brain is highly creative. So while we're out here, we mm -hmm. were curious about this and we'd like to see what they meant by that over there. And that's why they go all around everywhere because they're highly creative and they're very curious and they want to know what's going on. All right. I figured, you know, <laughs> math, geometry is part of math and I just... <laughs> And people that are right brain dominant usually do better in geometry, and left brain dominant usually do better in algebra. Let's do something. Do you have? Do you want to do a little experiment with me? Sure. All what right. Would you like to do? I want to know what the name Laura means, and that's my wife. Okay. So Laura now it's, says it's just, it's she just, was born it's, with self confidence. Uh huh. Something would have happened in her life that would have shaken her confidence, mm -hmm. but she gained it back again. Okay. She can be a workaholic, but she makes a great couch potato when she's done with the work. You know, it's like work, 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 work until you drop. Oh, I know that. You are so on. <laughs> okay. Oh. she's um, She does not like it when anybody is dishonest with her on any level. Don't tell her a white lie or yep. a black lie because she just wants to write you off. If she has to be polite, she will, but you have no value. Uh, yeah, that's true. That she's got true. a rebellious spirit. Do not tell your wife what to do. <laughs> she doesn't want to do it then. However, if you ask her, she's more than compliant. She's willing to do it. Mm -hmm. She shuts down when criticized, and then she has to do self-talk. She can take suggestions really well, but not criticism. And she made herself likable, but she's not going to change who she is and able to get liked. And one of the lessons in her name is to be aware that people want to take from her that which she doesn't want to give. So what that means is... People would want to take advantage of her. And one of the things she came to learn is how to stand up for herself. Boy, you nailed her right on. You're amazing. And, well, but anybody can do it once they've read the book and they put it yeah, in the play. But you see, you put it all together. That's why you're amazing. Oh, I just look at it that it was just patterns. Oh, I just look at it as just patterns. No big deal. Just patterns. <laughs> Just and it took me a long time uh -huh. to figure out the patterns, but it's just patterns. It's the same way when you're teaching math. Uh -huh. You look at it differently, and you try to find different ways of looking at the math so that the right brain person can see it and the left brain person can see it, and you can see how it falls in with the rest of the math. Because math is actually very easy. If I could figure it out, it is very easy. Um, I mean, I was I grew up around a lot of brilliant people, but I didn't test that way. And so I always feel like if I can do it, anybody can do it. Yeah, you know what? That's my philosophy too. And people say, well, I, I can't. I, well, that's because you haven't tried. Or you haven't put in the time it yeah. takes to learn something because some things you just don't learn overnight. Yeah. You know what I found with people in today's society, Sharon, is that when they try something and it fails, they just give up. You know, some of the letters will do that. Yeah. If you have a T in your name or you have an M in your name, I call those the letters of extreme. They will only go after that which they feel that they can really do well in. Right. And then they don't want to do the other stuff. Okay. So they have to be taught to try and try again or do it again until you get to your comfort level. And if you take a smattering of the CEOs mm -hmm. of all the big businesses there's an amazing number of CEOs that are named Tom. And if you look at the people that are in the jails, there's a prolifera of names of Tom. I mean, they're disproportionate names for how many there are. And it's like the T and the N are taken to the extreme. They'll do incredibly well with what they like, and they don't want to do anything with what they don't like. And so, and so they either don't do any of it and they end up in jail or they do it to the extreme, and they end up at the top of the game. It's a very interesting name. But the T's and the M's are people that like to take what they like to the extreme or not do it at all. How would your book, your science, your creation, your invention, how would that work for a real estate agent or somebody who's looking to buy a new home? Um, chapter two is all about that. Mm -hmm. How we buy and how we communicate and how we first adapt to someone else and how we first greet them is so important. And that's all chapter two. 
And I've gone into real estate agencies and just taught chapter two. And it's really cute because like in car salesmen, right. I've done that for them too. And, and then they, somebody that has been trained in one, they transfer to another and suddenly they're their top salesman and everybody goes, is that beginner's luck? And they're just <laughs> laughing going, no, I know chapter two of this book. Um, it's how you greet, for an example, if you start and you're on the phone and you're trying to sell or you're trying to sell a car or a house and you start with someone whose first vowel is an A. Right. Now, these real practical people that need to get the job done and they're in a hurry. It's like, give me facts and let me make up my own mind. Mm -hmm. And you start with, hi, how are you? They're already turned off. You've already wasted their time. And so it's very hard for them. They don't mean to be rude, but they want to get down to business. So basically what you should do is find out who the salesperson or the purchasing agent is in that company. Find out what their name is. Take the book. Know everything about them so that when you call them up to make the sale, you're already ahead of the game. All you need to know is the first vowel. Wow. For the same thing, like let's say the first vowel is an E. Mm -hmm. And... And so let's let's say I'm a telemarketer, I'm on the phone, and I'm going to call somebody, and their first vowel is an E. Yeah. That yeah. person, I'm going to start with, hi, how are you? How's your day going? And if it's in the morning, did you get enough sleep last night? Where the same call, if I was calling somebody with an A, I would start right away. I'm calling about, right. you have an opportunity to do this, and start giving the facts. And then you haven't wasted that person time, and they'll stay on the line. But there's six different approaches, and they're all laid out. First, the vowels are explained in Chapter 2, and then I always say, if it's not practical, you can't use it, what good is it? And I literally show you, from example, how to use it in a sales pitch. So we've got sales. We have um, HR, you know, human resources, um, corporate use. This book is, has endless uses. Lawyers use it. Wow. I have lawyers that call me up and say, here's the name of my client. Here's the name of the judge. Yeah. How do I need to present the case so that everybody's happy and I can communicate with everybody clearly? Now do you understand why I why I have such high respect for you, young lady? Look I, at I all the wonderful fun. things this you're doing. my toy. <laughs> I used to have a toy, but she took it away from me. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's... It's fun to have a useful tool yes. that literally that it took me 15 years to develop it, right. but I literally teach it in 15 hours. You can learn it really well in just 15 hours. Tell me about the, uh, tell me about the, uh, the course you're doing in Ottawa. Um, the course in Ottawa, if you're interested, you mm -hmm. can go to know the name.com then slash schedule, or you can just click the tab that says schedule if you go to the calendar, it's in December. It's the first weekend. It'll say level one nameology science. You click on it and it says in Ottawa, it'll give you the phone number of who to call. Um, it's being sponsored up there by uh, Chippo Chimiso, which we call Chippo for short, but that's her first name. And it's 397 uh, Canadian dollars for the entire class. And that includes lunch on Saturday because I keep you there forever. And it includes all of your supplies and a book because I come with all of that. And you end up knowing the system when you leave. And away you, uh, and you know, the, away you go. Um, what's your final message for the members of the Exo Nation around the world tonight, Sharon? Once you know the name, you know all about the person. And we really don't have any secrets because our name says it all. When people say, who are you? Mm -hmm. What do we answer with? We answer with our name as if it says it all. And indeed it does once you know nameology science. All I can say is thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. And it's always a great pleasure having you on. Um, your new book comes out, uh, Halloween. Halloween. That's, a, that's kind of a neat time for one of your books to come out, eh? Halloween. <laughs> Did you plan that? No, it just kind of happened that way. Synchronicity, huh? Synchronicity. So I just said, oh, that's cool. At least it's easy to remember. Do you believe in synchronicity? I really do. Yeah. I'm amazed at how the universe works. And and I feel like the more grateful we get all the time, yeah. the more we get to see how it works and how doors open. And it's because we're coming from this attitude of appreciation and gratitude. And I so believe it's so important to keep our talk 
positive. You and I were chatting before air and you said that uh, the times are changing. They are. Are these exciting times? You know, the Chinese have a saying that says, may you live in exciting times and we get what we ask for. And I definitely think they are. And I think that's why there's such a population explosion around the world right now, Mm -hmm. because everybody wants to be here. Nobody wants to miss the action that's happening now. Well, I, for one, am happy you are here tonight on the oh, Exxon. Oh, bless you. Thank you. And it's always, a great, both ways. I, it's always a great pleasure talking to you, Sharon. I wish you nothing but success uh, because you are the kind of person that I hold very close to my heart because you are helping people and you are part of the solution, not of the problem. And when you read the book, it's really nice. You can find out how to tweak tiny little things because if you have a challenge you have the solution in your name you can compare two names the Mm -hmm. teaches you how and it shows you how to tweak little things it's not much and you can get along with anybody if you want to sharon again thank you so much i'd love to have you on before christmas time if that works into your schedule so we can give some people some good advice on what to get other people for christmas Would love to. Thank you, Rob. You take care, my dear friend. And once again, congratulations and all the success to you. Thank you. And know that your guys for one week, if they order a book from us on the web, we'll be glad to send two instead of one. Two for one. Two for one. It's like happy hour here in the (laughs) X-Zone. Why not? (laughs) Take care, sweetie. X-Zone Nation, my guest this hour has been Sharon Lynn Wyeth. She is... The Nemology Scientist. There, we've given her a new name. She's got uh, a couple of books. The first one that is out right now is Know the Name, Know the Person. And coming out this Halloween, what, 11, 12 days from now? Know the Name, Know the Spirit. Her website, www.knowthename.com. Now, I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. For all of our Canadian listeners listening to us tonight, it's election night here, and uh, let me see. The Liberals are leading in 33, in 33 seats or 33 polls. Conservatives, zero. NDP, zero. Green Party, zero. Other parties, zero. Well, it looks like it's going to be a red sweep across Canada tonight. Probably wake up tomorrow morning with a new Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, the son of one of the great Prime Ministers of Canada, Pierre Elliott Trudeau. My name is Rob McConnell. I'll be back on the other side of this news break as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast centre in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. <laughs> 